the second most sort of diagnosed problem that we see in some of my clinics. And that's really sort of the mechanism of how to throw a tool. Now note that I, I referred to throwing a tool as opposed to swinging a tool. Now that's a very sort of uh, kind of minor distinction, but it makes a big difference in the world of ice climbing. And I'd like to illustrate just sort of how to kind of notice, if you will, or how to know whether you're doing it uh, less efficiently. Not incorrectly, but less efficiently. Now, uh, I assume that most folks watching this video, just like most folks attending my, my clinics, have swung a hammer before, tried to hit a nail with a hammer, for instance. Now, it's really, really important uh, to kind of know the distinction. Now, when we swing a hammer, we typically are gripping that hammer very tightly. Right? And that's one of the big key sort of differences between sort of how we grip a tool for throwing versus how we grip a hammer. Now usually again we have a very tight grip and usually with a hammer we're kind of doing one of these things. Now at the very very start of my clinics oftentimes I'll have my participants line up with ample space from side to side and take a tool and just to illustrate how we don't want to be doing this, how we don't want to necessarily expend energy, we try to swing these tools as if we're swinging a hammer at a nail. And as you can see here, it takes quite a bit of energy in my shoulders and in my biceps to move this tool, right? And that's sort of the feeling we don't want to experience while on an ice climb. Uh, modern ice tools, it's important to know, ours in particular, have been engineered so beautifully to do much of the work of throwing themselves into the ice. Uh, it's up to us, however, to, to create and generate enough head speed and to also sort of pilot, if you will, the tool with precision so that we're hitting the target, this patch of ice that we want to uh, sort of achieve that placement. So the next big problem, again, is the mechanism of a swing. Now how that segues into handwear is very, very important. Talking about how to grip an ice tool. One of the very, very easy problems to diagnose uh, oftentimes with folks who have never really thrown an ice tool would be the positioning of the grip itself. Uh, I see a lot of folks, first moments in our clinic, grabbing their ice tools quite high and not, not all the way down at the very, very bottom. Now, the reason this is very, very important has everything you did to do with our ability to generate enough head speed to get the penetration that we're looking for into the ice medium. Now, uh, to do this, I'd like to kind of illustrate this in profile, but uh, one of the, the key features of a modern uh, engineered ice tool is that unlike uh, what I illustrated with the hammer, right, we don't swing an ice tool, as I keep saying. Uh, we want to pretend almost as if this is a, a whip. Uh, we, we, we crack ice tools like whips as opposed to swinging them like hammers is something I like to say a lot in my clinic. So again, in profile, as you can see, if I'm trying to hammer a nail, I'll be holding the tool like so. But with ice, with ice, as I mentioned before, these tools are, are engineered so beautifully to do much of the work uh, of actually getting themselves uh, uh, positioned correctly and placed correctly. Uh, the biggest thing that we have to do is generate a lot of head speed. And so to generate enough head speed, we will need to assume the grip all the way at the bottom of the pommel. And the grip is really, really important to discuss. Uh, imagine for a moment the same grip that you would use when you're throwing a dart, for instance. When you're throwing a dart, it's quite a loose grip. It's not a, a clamped, tight grip. And again, we want to think about that type of grip when we're holding a, an ice tool. With the hand positioned all the way at the very, very bottom of the pommel, we want to maintain a fairly loose grip at the top, but a nice snug grip at the bottom here. And that'll enable us to kind of crack this tool like a whip as opposed to swinging it like a hammer. Now the difference is quite subtle, but I'm able to generate quite a bit more head speed, as you can see, by cracking it like a whip and allowing the tool to pivot uh, along the bottom of my pinky in the pommel of the tool, as opposed to choking it up here and using quite a bit of energy, as I said before, musculature in the shoulder and in the bicep. So again, to give ourselves the easiest time, that is to say, to, to take advantage of all the engineering that we've introduced in the design of these tools, it's very, very important to make sure that your grip is all the way at the very, very bottom. It's a nice loose grip as opposed to a really clamped tight grip. And that the type of handwear that you're using will enable you to feel as if you have really, really good control over this tool. Right? Now again, as I mentioned before, in really cold situations, you may have to wear a warmer glove just so that you can feel your hands. But again, uh, the thinner the glove that you're going to be able to pair with the tool, the more I think 
uh, you'll feel as if you're controlling the velocity of the head of the tool, the trajectory of the head of the tool. The last point that I'd like to make uh, is to highlight the diameter of the grip of the tool uh, that you happen to be throwing. Oftentimes in my clinics, uh, again, participants are demoing all different types of tools at these national and regional events, which is a wonderful resource for being able to do that. But oftentimes uh, when somebody with a much smaller hand is paired with a, a really thick tool, it's very, very difficult for that person to feel as if they have the same control uh, that they would uh, enjoy if they had a tool with a much smaller grip. So again, I'd say grip size is something that I would really, really emphasize as a very, very important fit issue when choosing your own personal tools. But I think uh, for the sake of sort of ice festivals, it's important uh, and incumbent, I'd say, on most ice climbers to sample as many different tools as possible to find that ideal combo of the diameter of the grip, the weight of the tool, uh, uh, and also something that you might be interested in purchasing. But again, those are the three factors that really tie into kind of the handware, how it relates to the tool itself. Now, the next point that I'd like to discuss is sort of the mechanics of the throw of the tool itself. That's something that, again, uh, as I illustrated earlier, there's a wrong way to do it that's very energetic, and there's a right way that's going to be essentially as efficient a throw of the tool and a placement of the tool as possible. Because again, the key with ice climbing, just like any other type of uh, climbing, is aggregate energy savings. How much energy can you save uh, in making this ascent so that you can save it for the hard bits of climbing that may potentially lie above us, right? So when we're talking about the throw of a tool, uh, I oftentimes will illustrate something, an exercise that I uh, will oftentimes do at the very early parts of the season so as I can kind of remember uh, what it feels like or have that muscle memory uh, of what it is like to throw a tool rather efficiently. So uh, this is just a, a sort of a self-diagnostic exercise that I run through at the start of every season just so that I get my, my body sort of remembering what it felt like to make an efficient throw. So again, once again, hand is all the way at the very bottom of the pommel of the tool. The grip is very, very light at the top, but nice and snug at the bottom. And one thing that you'll see me doing at the bottom of, a, of an ice climb early in the season is a very exaggerated motion, right? And the reason I'm doing this is to, again, remember what it feels like to throw a tool efficiently. Now, these are some motions that, again, I exaggerate for the sake of this exercise. Now, when I'm throwing a tool, one of the things that I'm really, really mindful of making sure to observe, is that we want to make sure that the tip of the pick, the head of the tool, my wrist, my elbow, and my shoulder are all in the same plane, right? As opposed to something like this. As you can see, if I'm throwing a tool out here, my wrist, my elbow, the head of the tool, and the pick are on the same plane, but not with my shoulder. As you can see, for an efficient throw, we want to really activate all of the big muscle groups in our shoulders to generate that head speed. I'm going to move it sort of in profile here to illustrate sort of uh, kind of the self-diagnostic exercise that I run myself through. So at the early parts of every season, what you'll see me doing is bringing the tool all the way back to the point where it's hitting my scapula. Now the reason I do this is it reminds me to keep my elbow nice and high, right? Uh, throughout the entire throw of the tool. Now see what happens if I bring my elbow down low. All of a sudden now, when I'm throwing this tool, I'm using, again, quite a bit of musculature in my shoulders and in my biceps, and I'm unable to really get the tool moving any faster than you can see here, right? And this is very energetic. It's using lots of calories. Whereas if I exaggerate the motion and lift my elbow up high, that guarantees that essentially the head of the tool has a much longer arc right? And that longer arc enables me to generate much more head speed, right? And again, I'm keeping mindful to keep everything in the same plane. I bring my elbow up high. I sometimes, you'll see me touch the scapula, right? And then follow through with my thrill, cracking it like a whip as opposed to swinging like a hammer. And this is an exercise that I do both on the right and the left sides. And I try to do this and exaggerate those movements at the early parts of the season so that my mind and my body can really easily remember what it feels like to make an efficient throw and a good placement of the tool. Now, as I mentioned before, the engineering that we've built into our tools will do the rest. Now, every tool, regardless of whether it's ours or another brand's, will typically give you some type of positive feedback 
that the placement itself is something that you can actually trust some body weight to. These definitely have uh, a nice one stick thud. They have a nice, nice feedback that really sings to us, that confirms to us that in fact the tool is really securely sunk into the medium and that you can actually trust your body weight to it. And it's something that I would urge you guys if you're ever attending a festival in the future to demo some of our tools to feel what that feels like. Now every tool, just like every guitar sounds uh, very unique, every tool will give you that feedback. And so that feedback from our tool is a really, really positive confirmation that again, that placement is something you can really, really trust and commit body weight to.